Hey, welcome, Build Show. Steve Bazek here. I'm out here at one of our framing jobs here, and today we're going to talk about site built trusses. So, what's a site built truss? Basically, it's something that we fabricate here on site, it doesn't get built off site and then just get delivered here. We actually take each of the individual components, put them together to create the site built truss right here. So if you notice up here, you'll see we have four of them across here. We have the bottom cord here. All the trusses are made up of LVLs or laminated veneer lumber. It's typically the stock that you use to build up beams, etc., inside the building. And then you notice that these two directly tie into the three LVLs that are being used as rafters there. And so they go up over the top, way up top there, you can see we have a collar tie which basically holds the top of that site built truss together. And then it comes back down onto the other side here. It gets framed together. You see that we have the outer, how these all get stitched together, all five of these LVLs to make up that beam. So why do you do a site built truss? Well, as you can see, we have a pretty expansive room here that's going to be kitchen, dining room, pantry. There's, there's a bunch of spaces inside this one room. But we wanted it column free. But, so we didn't have the opportunity to put columns in here, obviously, because we wanted this open space. So the way to do it is, is to build up these site built trusses to then carry a structural ridge beam that carries each of the rafters. So if you wanted to follow along right quick, what's happening here structurally is, there's a load in these rafters, right? So, or the snow load, etc. Well, part of that load comes down to the wall, but part of it goes all the way up to the ridge. And then we have to deal with what's happening at the ridge with the ridge load. Well, the ridge load then gets split between these two trusses. And it comes down. Now, in a typical house, you would just simply have columns that go all the way down to the foundation below that pick up that ridge load. But because we wanted this clear open space, we couldn't. So instead of having a vertical load picking up that ridge, we have basically this site built trust. Another way to think of it is, think of that site built trust as just two sloped columns. So instead of the vertical column, we basically made it two and made them sloped columns. And then they're able to carry that ridge beam and carry all of this load. And that, of course, affords the opportunity to have this as one great open space. So once we get the structural down, then we have to think about, okay, well, what are the opportunities here aesthetically and architecturally for these site built trusses? Now, each one of these trusses is gonna get wrapped in a finished white oak. They're gonna look, look like a beautiful wooden truss up there, but there are still some intricacies to laying out a project like this. If you notice over here, as those site built trusses come over, they actually sit an inch and three quarters in from the edge of the dormer. Now, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just make them flush? Well, the answer is, remember, this is gonna get drywall, and then this is gonna get sheathed in white oak. If this was flush with that, then my white oak would come here and it wouldn't have a place to stop or terminate and it wouldn't feel like it was a truss underneath the roof. So by kicking this in that three inch and three quarters, I have a place for that finish to terminate and for that drywall then to pick up. Now, the other thing as we look across here, we notice that each of these four trusses are directly aligned with this beautiful window and beautiful dormer, right? So that as we move across the space, you'll see there's a nice rhythmic harmony that gets set up where you have ceiling, dormer, ceiling, dormer, and then ceiling. So that's to provide some harmony and, and just that great aesthetic feeling that when you're in this space, um, and not only architecturally does it work well in breaking up that roof plane, but it also allows me to take this window and go from the seven footer or six footer all the way up to this nine footer to capture some of the views on the outside. Here. So, so that's about it for site build trusses today. We're gonna jump over to the classroom. We're gonna sit down at the drafting table. 
we'll talk about this a little bit further. All right, so welcome. Back here at the drawing desk, got this nice drawing. We took a nice tour, saw that room. We talked about the site built um, roof trusses that we did out there. Well, let's take a little deep dive and find out exactly what's happening there, how we put these together, how we plan for them, what's actually happening there. So I have here, this is a, just a real simple building section. I, I took an excerpt from the construction drawings here. And you notice the first thing that we have the roof rafters, but we don't have anything happening in the middle here. So remember in a conventional roof system, we get in a load that gets applied to the roof. Well, because these are slope members, that load then gets divided up between a vertical load and a horizontal load, right? There's some horizontal thrust to it. It's kind of like, think about if I have the ground, the house, and I put a ladder there. Well, if I put the ladder directly along the wall, then there's only a vertical load applied to that ladder the minute I climb up it. But if I take that ladder and I put it, you know, on a 30 degree angle, well, then as I climb up it, I apply the load vertically, but that ladder also wants to kick out. And the more I tilt that ladder, the more I'm at risk of that kicking out and less of a vertical load being applied to that ladder. So the same with a roof system. The minute we get roof load applied to it, well, this wall wants to kick out and the roof system wants to kick out. So we have to provide some type of resistance there. Well, that resistance can come in two ways. One, as you saw in the roof framing uh, video that was posted recently, if you haven't seen it, please go back and check it out. But you'll, you'll know that when this wants to get kicked out, it's real easy to come in here and put in some ceiling joists and, and those ceiling joists basically work as a tension member between these two walls and rafter systems that want to kick out and they basically hold it together. Well, the other way to battle this is, is when you have a vertical load, we can simply apply a vertical member here or a column basically, right? And that vertical member basically resists the vertical load. So if this can't fall, this can't kick out, right? Because this basically wants to go down and kick out. Well, if this can't go down, then this can't kick out. So you can simply apply a column there. But in the case in this room here, when you saw it in the video when we were out at the job site, you notice that that's kitchen dining room space and we really don't want to make a provision for a column down through the middle of that space. So we had to solve that problem a different way. And the way we did that was, was to build this site built truss that then has a beam in here. We're going to look at it and plan and talk about that a little bit more, but basically take out the column and make the truss resist these loads internally in that truss. So how did we do that? Well, so this is the roof framing plan for that section of the house. You see all these heavy lines here, 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 and here. Well, those are those four site built roof trusses that we had out there. So if we look at this in plan, we basically have, right, span one, span two, span three, four, and five. So basically it's no different than floor framing, except that our floor here is on the diagonal. It's not on the flat, but basically mother nature treats it the same way. You apply a load, you have to prior apply a resistance that's equal or better than that load. So the building doesn't fall down. It's, you know, basic physics. Um, so we have these five loads, obviously three here is the widest. So that's the one where we basically set up the beam size. So because this is the biggest span of the five, then our ridge beam here was sized based on the span and load coming in three. Because if it can solve for the larger span, then it's going to solve for the smaller spans easily. And just for cohesiveness and ease of construction, we want to make that ridge beam the same size continually all through there. We don't want the framer to have to change beams and change sizes, etc. So, so we have that, we size it to the worst case. In this case, it's number three. Well, so what's happening there? As I showed you in the section, these basically four trusses and the end conditions here 
are basically working as columns, right? So if we look at this, we'll use the beam three span for our example. Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rafter bays there. So basically what we do is we're collecting these four rafter bays and we're putting this whole load in this area into that truss. This whole area here goes into that truss. And the way it goes into that truss is as the load gets applied, it goes down the rafter to the wall and it comes up to the beam. The beam collects the load and brings it to the roof truss. And then the roof truss brings it back down to the wall. Wall takes it to the foundation. Foundation takes it to the ground. And then it basically resists it and it comes up. So, so that's basically our column. This, these site built trusses are working as our columns. That's our beam setup. It looks very similar to a floor framing diagram. And uh, that's how it works. We basically take the load of this four trusses here. And oh, by the way, we have some trusses on this side or rafters, sorry. So this area here is going to get collected and be brought back to that point. So basically, this roof truss here is collecting this area. It's going to take this too. But remember, because we have wall here and wall there, it only gets half of it. So it's basically this area here gets collected. And it goes into the truss there and gets transferred. So what we've done with those trusses and using this beam to drag that load to it is we took the work of a conventional roof where the load goes into the rafters and basically goes down to the wall. We've just collected it, put it on this ridge beam and took the ridge beam load into that site built truss. And then we build that site built truss to react to the load that's being imposed on it by the accumulation of all of those rafter bays, right? So let's take a quick look at what we actually did to that site built truss. So here's a section, and this is basically just a detailed sheet of those four site or three site built trusses. We had one that was a little different, um, but these are those four site built trusses. So there's our ridge beam, right? So as this roof goes along here, it has a series of rafters and those rafters get collected and it puts that load into the ridge beam. Well, we can't put the column in here. Remember we talked about that. So we need to be able to take that load. So all I've done is work with the structural engineer and say, I, but what we've done as a team here was we took this column and we split it into two sloping columns, right? Now, those two sloping columns, again, just like your typical roof rafter system, it gets down to the wall here and it wants to kick out and it wants to take the wall with it. Well, we introduce this bottom cord of the truss, just like a ceiling joist. But basically, this roof truss, what it is, is it's the consolidation of 10 feet of roof consolidated into 10 inches of roof truss. So it takes the work of that 10 feet of roof in a traditional roof frame, brings it all in, condenses it into this one roof truss so that we get a nice large load that comes down here in these columns and that takes it down into the foundation. But we have that bottom cord here that resists. So we don't get this kick out. And as a result, the wall doesn't kick out. This stays nice and true. We have the collar tie up here which I'm not a structural engineer, so I can't speak to the specifics of that. But what that mostly does is it keeps this joint nice and tight and working well together, right? It keeps that whole upper system. If we looked at this, it's kind of a microcosm of the truss overall. So that collar tie keeps everything nice and tight up against the beam. So that beam can bring our load in. It brings it into that site built truss. The bottom cord here resists that, keeps those bottom ends of that site built truss in nice and tight as a tension member. And the truss doesn't move, doesn't deflect, um, doesn't bend. And as a result, it holds up our roof. So our basically our reaction forces that are being built inside this truss 
oppose and exceed the loads that are coming in on our beam here. And that's why the building stands up. A few details here. We can see all of these cords, as you saw when we're in the site video there, these are all LVL, laminate, laminated veneer lumber. So they're actually wood beams that are put together. And they're put together in a sense that we have eight inch long screws here that go through these whole systems. We have two of these in the bottom and we had three here on the rafter so that these two sit inside the two spaces that are created by those three rafters. You get a nice clear shot of that um, in that site video of how this all went together. But basically it gets all screwed together there with these uh, SDS screws, which are a structurally designed screw, um, eight inches long, each connection. So that's all nice and held tight. And basically, you know, that load gets applied and this resists it. Now, what that does aesthetically, you know, from an architectural standpoint, a couple things. We have the floor down here. And if you notice, I push the roof truss up here, about 12 inches. And that's just to get us a little bit more kind of of that perceived ceiling height, because we have those four beams now that go across on that site belt truss. But we also have all of this nice open space here where you could put a fan in here, all right? You could fill that space, but you get that kind of aesthetic value of having that volume ceiling in that space and making it a really, really special place as opposed to just having that flat ceiling come along here with a traditional roof system. So there you have it. That's a site built truss. That's how we take a column out of the building. Don't use it. We take the, that vertical column, we turn it into two sloped columns here. Pick up those reactions in the wall system here. Make this a nice rigid system. Building doesn't fall down. People get to go into their nice kitchen and dining room, have a beautiful volume ceiling. We're going to wrap these in a nice uh, white oak. It'll get finished. It'll look like a giant wooden truss in there. And uh, it's going to be pretty spectacular. So I look forward to looking at some of the shots here when we get closer to finishing it. But that's our video on a site built truss. So I encourage you, if you haven't already, I have a whole series of videos out there. Um, feel free to jump on them. Go take a look. If you have any questions, I'm not a hard guy to find. Um, if you're looking for some day, daily enthusiasm, you can get, find me on Instagram. I'm at Stephen Basic Architect on Instagram. And uh, I try and get something out there almost daily. Um, informative, some type of building science or um, instructional video or photo that we talk about. And, uh, you know, look forward to seeing you in the future on the Build Show. We got a lot of great projects coming up here in the future. A lot of great information um, that I'll be passing on. So, and, uh, you know, quick shout out to all my colleagues on the Build Show Network. Make sure you check out, you know, Jake, Wade, Brent, and Matt. Everybody's doing a fabulous job out there. We're trying to, you know, help the building industry, you know, increase its value and understanding and, and just put out some good content. So, until next time, thanks for joining me. See you next time on the Build Show Network. Long live our buildings.